Hello everyone. Welcome to JC English Second Language Program 1. In this program, we will see how Jessica and her friend Indileni will help her sister Medi to develop her reading comprehension skills. The objectives of today's lesson are to explain the stages to follow when answering reading comprehension questions, to read questions with understanding and identify keywords in the questions. Enjoy the program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's so funny? Mary fell another tip. Look at those answers. I don't believe it. Let me see. Five out of 20. She seriously failed again. Badly. Look at this pathetic answer, Vince. Jessica, you cannot say pathetic. Your sister is really trying her best. I mean, pathetic is a cool word to use. Sorry. We need to help Medi with her reading skills and how to answer comprehension questions. Definitely. She doesn't even follow her instructions. Mm, yes. Instructions are so important. We need to speak to her today. Where is she? Probably watching TV, as usual. Let's call her. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing with my stuff? And who gave you permission to go to my bed? I didn't go to your bed. Your paper was just lying on the desk. Listen, you two. It's no use fighting over this. Let's rather find a way to help your sister. Who said I need help? Your paper does. Maddie, you need to talk about your test. You failed again, sweet. No, I didn't. It's an E, not an ungraded. Yes, Maddie. Five out of twenty is a fail. You can do so much better if you improve on your reading skills and how to answer comprehension questions. I hate English and that teacher just wants to make my life a living hell. Look, Ains, mm -hmm. I got all these first answers right. Just because I did not encircle the letters, she marked it all wrong. Correct. You did not follow the instructions. If the question instructs you to encircle the appropriate answer, you should do so. And how could you have so many spelling errors? Like you know how to spell. Maddie, you're supposed to copy your answer from the text. Jessica is right. Give me your paper. See? Question 12. You only needed to copy the word from the text. How could I be so stupid? I didn't even see that. It's just that sometimes we don't get enough time during tests. Do you know how to skim and scan through a text to look for answers? I know you. Yes, I do. I've got a DVD of that. We can watch it together. This DVD won't start. It always has a problem. Should I play button? Finally. You do not need to read the whole text intensively. You can just skim and scan through the text to find the answers. Huh? Listen, make sure that you read the instructions carefully. That's the golden rule. Read the instructions? All right, I think I'll have to note all of this down, don't you? That's a good idea. You should read the title and introduction of the text. It will give you an idea of what the text is about. Read the questions. Skim the text to see if you can find the answers to the questions. When you scan a text, you should not read every word. Aha, but you never find all the answers. All the answers appear in the text. The questions are usually asked in the same order as the paragraphs appear in the text. This means that you should look for the answers to the question from the first to the last paragraph and not randomly. That really helps not to waste so much time looking for answers. Usually, but remember, not always. It seems you also have problems with the meaning of some of the words in the text. Yeah, sometimes the words are too difficult to understand. Then I'm really confused and just want to give up. Well, why don't you underline those words you don't know the meaning of, especially if you need to know it in order to do the exercise. Then consult your dictionary. That way you learn new words all the time. I suppose so, but you're not allowed to use dictionaries in the examination. No one are writing tests. You could try to infer the meaning from the context. What's in fair? To arrive at the most probable meaning of the word. Just read the sentence before the one the word appears in and the sentence after it. Try and guess what the word in this context means. 
Aha. Uh -huh. I get it. I hope it is that easy. It won't be at the beginning, but you shall get a hang of it later on. Yeah, I know that. You should also pay attention to mark allocation. If a question is worth three marks, it will require a longer answer than a question that is worth one mark. Yeah, I know that. Do you know the difference between various types of questions? Types of questions? Yeah, what questions and why questions? What question means that you should name or explain something? Why questions mean you should give a reason. I see. My goodness, I still have a lot to learn. One is never too old to learn something new. Now do your precious. Yep, make it quick and snappy. No, Jessie, we should help her. No, I don't need help for now. We're here if you need more help. I really don't need your help, Jesse. I now know how to do this. No problems, Mary. I also need to finish my homework. Okay, for these first questions, I only need to suck the correct answers. That's easy. Don't forget, a name must have a capital letter. Oops, I forgot. Never forget your grammar rules. They still do apply when answering comprehension questions. English has too many rules. For all the other subjects, you get them up whether the answer is spelled correctly or not. I know, but that should not be the case. English is a language and we should follow the rules. At least you don't have to study any content for English. That's so true. Hey, you can't say no when the question clearly says say true or false. But what's the difference between false and no? We are not following the instructions. Whatever. Please spell correctly. Huh? What? False, not place. Why don't you make use of your index finger when copying from the text? That's what I used to do. While Indeleni and Maddie carry on making corrections, can you make a list of important points to remember when completing a comprehension exercise? Read quickly but carefully through the whole passage and questions. Read again, paying attention to the demands of questions asked. Pay attention to key words. Pick out relevant information that answers the question. Make sure you choose the most appropriate answer from those suggested. Understand the vocabulary and try to explain or replace specific words and phrases with your own. Consider the value of the question. What is it worth? So that you know how much time to spend on it and how much detail to include. Underline the relevant sections that relate to the key words in the question. Put down the question number to guide you. Remember, correct spelling and grammatical accuracy are important. With multiple choice questions, carefully study the different options and choose the most appropriate one. To answer true or false questions, you should read the passage carefully, referring back to the passage to verify each statement given. Make sure you understand what the question wants you to do. You may be asked to quote, tick or encircle the correct answer or to use your own words. Also make sure you understand the vocabulary but do not waste time in the examination looking for difficult words. Be brief. Do not repeat the question as part of your answer. Okay, I think I'm done now. Cool. Great. Let me see. I'm so proud of you. Thanks for helping me, in. You're welcome. Yeah, you too. Thanks, sis. This concludes our first program in this series. Thank you for watching. Make sure not to miss program two, which deals with contextual clues.